a lot of people ask about like how to make their head movement better. And I think that that's not exactly what the problem is. The problem is that they need to make their head movement better. It's that they need to understand when they're supposed to be moving your head. And the answer is almost always. Bop, bop, bing. Head movement, head movement, there you go. Your girlfriend gives it to you so that other women will not find you attractive. Yeah. Okay. Hey. You should be moving your head like almost all the time. And I don't mean big dramatic things. That's one of the other mistakes people make is they tend to make their head movement early on too big. Why? Because getting punched in the face is scary. So the best way to learn it is to get a partner to go super duper slow, like ridiculously slow. He throws a jab. I know it's going to be a jab. No, go ahead. Aim right here. Make me move. That's a one common thing we, we tend to get away from. We're trying to show things and demonstrate things. You want to make the person move their head. He moves, he goes straight at me and it's going to hit me. If he hits me once, uh, you know, that's my fault. If he hits me twice, that's his fault because he's going too fast. All right. So he goes again and I slip out of the way. Now I only need to move this much. If we were in boxing gloves or something like that, I would need to move boxing glove, boxing glove width. But it doesn't need to be big. It doesn't have to be this big, elaborate thing. When I slip, I take this shoulder, move it a little bit towards the opposite knee. The jab comes, I slip just a little, and I want to go forward. I'll link a video up there where we covered kind of how to counter off of this. And I don't want to go too far because if I go too far on this initial slip, I'm out of room to continue to move this way without moving my feet. If I go too big or too low and more punches come, I can't go bigger and lower anymore. If I keep this movement small, and I need to move maybe some more, maybe throws another punch. I keep that movement small. I don't go too low because if I go too low, I can't duck more. And then he throws another punch and I can go under that. So you don't want to like use up all your distance in any one direction because you might have to move that same direction again. Good, yeah, okay, good. You can, yeah, you can slip yeah, inside. You can slip, no, slip inside. You can slip inside. It's just when you're first learning it, yeah. that's just, it's just easier to learn yeah. the other way. All right? oh. That's the other thing. People think that there's a set pattern. Like when he jabs, I have to slip this way. Or when he throws his cross, I have to slip that way. And when he throws his hook, I have to roll under this way. He throws that hook, I have to roll under that way. That's the best way to learn it at first. That's just an easier, higher percentage way to learn it first, but there's strategies. If he throws a jab where I slip to the inside, yes, I have to contest with the right hand. I'm kind of throwing my face towards it, but you know, shit happens. But if you're a loser with no friends and have no one to practice with, don't worry. They have things for you. The slip bag or the maze bag or whatever you want to call it, you slip, you can roll, the idea is we use this to learn to keep the movement small. Just let it barely miss. If you need to practice in isolation, you can practice your slip, let it go by. Practice your slip, let it go by. Then you can add the rolls, come back up, slip roll. But we want to eventually get to where we can keep our head in motion the whole time. Slipping, rolling, changing it up, adding punches like this. You can get fancy with it if you want to. You don't have to though. It's just a tool to help you get used to it coming at you and you moving your head while keeping it close to the thing that's coming at you. Some people, you can, you don't need this. You can use anything. You can hang anything from a string and swing it. Some people would say, use something that hurts to teach you a lesson. I disagree with that. I say, use something that doesn't hurt to where if I mess up, I'm not punished for that. And you might think that's a mistake, but the idea is that I get comfortable doing it. Because one really important lesson in fighting is having shit coming at your face and not freaking out about it. And even, you know, you're going to get hit. Sometimes you get hit. Sometimes you get hit, but that doesn't mean you stop moving your head, which is another big mistake. Sometimes when people, they'll be moving their head, moving their head, moving their head, moving their head, get hit and stop. You know, like I said in the other video, it's like basketball. Just because they scored a basket doesn't mean your defense sucks. You might need to keep doing what you're doing. They're going to hit you. Slip rope is another one that you can do by yourself. This is just, you just use a, a hand wrap. You tie it up. Oh my God, that thing stinks. Ugh, this thing smells like pickles. 
Everyone should know the motion for the roll right now. The cool part about this is you're not just practicing the head movement. Real quick, we're doing a U like this, not a V. We're not going to run back into the next punch. A lot of people will slip and then they get in a rush to go this way. The first step is down. We go down, around, and up. That's the motion for the roll, but that's not the most important part of using this. The most important part of this is learning to roll while moving forward when you're by yourself and you don't have anyone to punch you in the face. When we roll, we're gonna take little micro adjustments of our feet. We step out and sideways and sideways and forward. We go like this, like a little two-step. This is just the basic idea of moving forward while rolling. This isn't always how your feet are gonna go. Sometimes you'll need to be a little more active with your feet, making small adjustments while moving your head. That, I think, to, speaks a little more to like what a real fight is gonna be like. It's never for sure I'm gonna be able to move this foot this way and this foot this way. And every time I move my head one way, that foot is what moves that way. We're gonna to need to be able to make micro adjustments that might not always be ideal. You know, we might have to switch stances, move our head around, but we can stay in balance no matter how much we move our feet while we're moving our head and staying close to that rope to keep the movement small. Eventually, you get to where you add the punches. You punch here, roll under, keeping your guard tight. That's another mistake. People, when they move their head, they think they have to move their hands. You can keep your hands right here. In fact, I think you should at first, because like, what if you get it wrong? You might zig when you should have zagged. So keep those hands tight. Practice throwing good fundamental punches in balance, you know, not bouncing off a bag or a pad or a sparring partner. Throw good fundamental balance punches. Step under, staying close, not using too much movement at the same time. Boom, boom, bing, roll, bop, bing, roll, get fancy, boom, boom. You can mix in some fancier footwork with your head movement. Boom, boom, boom. And then eventually, you know, you should practice going backwards. Um, Moving backwards and moving your head is not something that you should do like a lot of, right? If, if that's the case, you're messing up somewhere else. You should be cutting an angle, but being balanced, moving your feet, moving your head at the same time, no matter what your scenario is, is a good skill to have. But if you want more fitness tips, self-defense techniques, gear reviews, as well as concepts and principles that make you hard to hurt, Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications.